might be interesting to see someone who's an art teacher, who is um, good at using a certain other medium, how they explore um, something new, but also something that's got a huge meaning. I mean, oil painting is the medium that's been used throughout the ages. Um, so I got a book from the library. Um, it's a Learn How to Paint Oils for the Beginner by Alwyn uh, Crawshaw. He does quite a few actually how-to books. So this is kind of what I've been going through. Um, I bought a set of Georgian oil colours, which I think is student quality. It's not the most... Uh, it's not the most special one, just kind of like the colours to start with. Um, one of the things I do enjoy in this book, he already talks about, I don't use black, I don't use either. I don't tell my used to, students to use black unless if we're working with Indian ink because just it's good to learn how to mix. It's going to really improve your colour theory and also um, black is really going to kind of shut down your painting. To, to be honest, in the end it's always about means to the end, so if you're really working on something like a black painting, then go ahead and do it, but otherwise it's just kind of boring to already use black. Ah, oh, there actually is isn't black in there! It's burnt umber! Ooh. It's like they know. So I've got burnt umber in this set. Viridian hue, which is a really lovely bright green. Let's pop down some colours. So one of the things that Mr. Crawshaw is that it's best to put colours uh, over and over again on the same spot so you will get almost like an instinctive movement towards when you need which any kind of colour. For now I'm not going to put any solvents in or gels or mediums. This one's quite smoothly, I'm quite impressed by this. I remember it being much thicker. That's quite nice. Ooh. It's weird filming this because like you kind of forget but you also just need to experience it in the moment. Fifteen. Forty. Oh, that's the thing. Maybe we should actually start with this one. Da -da. Ooh. I'm just grabbing a little bit of it on the brush. See what it does. Oh, it starts flowing really nicely actually. Very softening. It almost feels like watercolour. Get a bit of dry brush action there. One of the things I find that it's still the pigment's still really quite strong. And here it goes. There she goes. So this is I think where you should use a drag. Simply because you've now got kind of like a paint clean or a paint thinner in it. So I'm scared if it's now gonna mix with any of the other solution. 1542 Captain's Lock. This was actually the most expensive, and this was actually the medium he said you don't necessarily need straight away. Um, so I think this allows you to make your paint dry faster. Um, this one already seems quite dry. Oh, there you go. Live. When I was in the shop, the guy was impressed by how good of a starter set I was buying. I guess that gave me street cred. Thins oil colours increases transparency in gloss and speeds drying. Thin layers will be touch dry in approximately 24 hours. Delicate level brush strokes create an enamel like surface. Apply thin only, do not pour apply. Not be used as a varnish or final coat. It took so long for oil to dry that something like this I can imagine for some people is like a godsend. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit because I did get for a little bit in there in the first one. So it does the same thing. As with the dilutant, oh, it's becoming very nice and easy to move around. I'd be very curious to hear like what kind of medium you use and why you use it. I like it better than the than this stuff than the dilutant. Um, it feels <laughs> weirdly less chemical-ish. paint and let's drag a little bit of the medium on there and see what it does. Yeah, I think it does like the similar thing as anything else. Oh, it still feels quite thick. So I think maybe what it does is that it builds up transparency but it doesn't take down um, the thickness because this all became quite thin. You still get a nice thick bit of paint but it, you can work on it more and more transparent. 
because this is the whole thing that you see in oil paintings, right? You see like the real nice thickness. People were able to lay it, put big clumps on it. But I can also see that this is why this is the stuff that you can run out really quickly. It's best to carry some over to your paint and actually not leave the paint in there because then you end up mixing it with other colors and now we can actually make time to put on the top. Okay, it's really coming quite thin. There we go. That's hella cool. We've got our tests here that we've done so far with just yellow. Um, so the biggest question now is if we start mixing colors, how is that going to act? I can already kind of feeling some of the anxiety coming back of how weirdly it keeps mixing. Like you cannot put one color over another without it not mixing. Because that's one of the things that oil does. Like I've worked with oil, I've worked with oil pastels in my classes because it's really it's a really good approachable medium, and that's kind of the feeling that I'm getting. Like it's just hard to put anything on top. So I just want to try and see what happens if I grab a dab of white and I put it on top. So you can still layer it quite well on top, but you see how quickly everybody wants to start a mix. Just really just gonna be making a mess, and that's one of the things I'm good at. So I'll start here without the medium. And then I'll start adding the dilutant. Um, maybe I'll start adding the dilutant in here. And then I'll start adding a bit of the gel kit. And this is where I start adding the gel. But I think I'll just do it a little bit without first. One of the things I will find frustrating the more I will continue with this is the drying time. I like working quick and I can already see happening that I would want to, in my head I'd want to go over this and I want to do a nice layer of a different colour and it's not how that's going to work. I can imagine that you'd really have to plan whatever it is that you're painting so you can actually leave space for the colours and not go over it, not layer it like with acrylics. I'm going to just grab a little bit of the normal dilutant, which is this, which is what I've just been using to to um, clean my brush, and I'm just putting a little bit on here on the purple that I've just been making. Oh, that just sucks up all the rest of the paint to make sure that it mixes. So if you'd be using this, you'd really have to know what you're doing. But even really looking at what I'm painting, to be honest, <laughs> you just look at it and go like... Oh, no one's psychiatrist and looking at this going like, this girl is nuts. Okay, gel kit. So this is the medium that allows things to kind of run smoother and dry faster. Anybody even kind of see it dissolve around it? It's just a blending heaven, really, the oil. It's just like having oil pastels but on a brush. Much softer. Got this gel now. Quite a lot. And I'm just gonna check what happens if I only put a little bit of pigment in there. Should really get a very transparent red now with the same consistency of just pure paint. So I could... Yeah. Isn't that cool? I love that. I'm really enjoying this. I think I was quite nervous, like I put it off, put it off for a long time to play around with oils and you start imagining what it's like to work with the medium and actually to realise just a delight. Because oils I feel like always have so much pressure on it, it's like no, you can just have fun with it. Okay, what I want to try out with the gel is if I were to mix it with this stuff and I want to see if it then also dries quicker. And I wonder if it still, yeah, you can see it gets diluted, like you probably won't get the nice clumps as you would. It's probably going to get a bit smoother. So that'd be interesting, right? Like if you want the nice clumps that you get here, but you still want them to be a bit smoother and you want them to dry a bit faster, you could use the gel kit. So always have a look at how well you load up your brush, right? Because this is one of the things I'm also curious how this works with oils. Because if with acrylics, you just load up just the beginning, it's going to be hard to, just like the tip, it's gonna be hard to move around your brush, like your whole brush is gonna act accordingly to what it's loaded up with and paint. So if it's just a little bit, then of course like gravity is gonna make certain points heavier and it's gonna be 
good continue things are happening so don't expect to just put paint on your brush and it'll just kind of do whatever you want like it's gonna move according to where it's heavier where it's lighter so it's kind of like adding water into making it move a bit smoother so you get less of those dry brush tickings there you go oh that's interesting so you still get dry brush but like it's in a smoother lines I wonder if I can paint with this now Ooh, look how clean my brush is, even though it's got green and everything in it. It's really clean. If I drop some paint in there, if it would kind of just like bleed. See, it's bleeding a little bit. Okay, I think I've kind of gotten to near the end of where I need to go with this. I'm gonna leave it at that. This is a nice ramble way of stuff so far. I think this is a blending I haven't. I'm still gonna wash these brushes with some soap. This is already just the paint. It's still really wet, you can see it, and it's now an hour later. Still very, very wet. This one's still shiny, so I mean, can guarantee you it's very wet. This one should dry quicker, but it's still very wet. I hope this was interesting to see for me to mess around with. Um, so I hope it inspires you to do the same. It's so important just to mess around with this. For me, this was really uncharted territory. It really was, and but I really enjoyed doing this, not having any expectation of myself, being kind of nervous doing so. Next time, we'll try and do some figurative elements. 